Hello guys, welcome to ECTV Facebook Tech View another episode. Uh, today, Nikhil, I'm welcome you guys uh, to introduction to system administration. So whoever is already watched my orientation video, you guys already know uh, what I'm gonna cover with this uh, syllabus. So you guys already aware of it, like what kind of syllabus I have. If you watch my first video, which is uh, posted, I think two or three weeks ago uh, um, in my channel, it's a so introduction uh, system administration um, orientation. So this is the second video, but chapter wise, my syllabus wise, this is the first video, chapter one. So the chapter one, um, this video is introduction to system administration. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and I'll show you guys actually what I have for you guys. Um, All right, so I'll stop it again and, okay, screen number two. So this one, this screen is shared, okay? And I believe all of you guys are able to see my screen. And aham, introduction to system administration. So we need to know actually what is the system administration, what you need to do. So. In my first video, I explained the whole syllabus, and this is the first chapter, okay? Uh, in general system administration, this chapter will cover a uh, role and responsibility of system administrator, basic of operating system, Microsoft Active Directory architecture. Maybe, I don't know, uh, I can cover this one in this video. Uh, I have a plan to create a separate video under this chapter, just for the Active Directory. What is Active Directory? I cannot tell you guys in one word. So I need to have a separate video for that. And also I'll discuss about the network architecture hardware. Like for example, to have a good idea about the system administration. So I'll cover all those topics here, right? So the first thing is role and responsibilities of a system administrator. So if you want to be work as a system administrator, what kind of roles you will have and what you should do? So in, because it is a lot of stuff you need to study, read, uh, I'll post this um, uh, documents along with my video. So you guys will have it, you can just read it, but I'm just going to tell you some, uh, like some stuff from here. Uh, what are the system admis administrator responsibilities and skill? What you should have. So system admin responsibilities, as a system administrator, you just need to think you have to manage something, infrastructure level. You have to build something. You have to monitor something. You have to provide some permissions. If you, if you, because there is a lot of, inside the system administration, there is a lot of track, right? Somebody is working only for Active Directory. Somebody is working only for backup. Somebody working only as a, like, it depends on the organization, how big it is, right? file management, software resolution, update, security, incident detection, response and resolution, problem solving. So it's a lot of things, small, small things, backup and disaster recovery planning, patching, uh, application compatibility, um, use of a syslog server, like um, uh, how you can analyze this log and how you can set up the syslog, how you ensure all the applications and servers is sending the log to your log server or, Automation, how you can automate your systems, applications, uh, monitoring, like how you can monitor your whole system. There is a lot of things involved with this, but I'm not going with all of things because it's going to be confusing for you because it's the first chapter, okay? So the only thing I can start right now, which is types of operating system. So we should have, as a system admin, we should have a solid concept of operating system. So now, if I can explain you guys what is the operating system is, right? Operating system. So now I'm going to discuss about the operating system now. Operating system. So operating system can be what? Operating system can be, it can be Windows operating system, right? It can be, Mac operating system, right? It can be, but I don't know. It can be maybe, right? 
or Mac Mini, Apple Mac, right? Or it can be Linux or Unix, right? Linux or Unix operating system. So Linux and Unix, there's some other upper, like they have a multiple, multiple types of flavor, multiple types of operating system from different, different vendor, different, different company. So in this syllabus, we'll cover on only the windows. And if I get a chance, maybe I can make another video for Linux, just only how you can deploy a Linux machine. Uh, that's it. Plus, we're going to work with some Linux machine, like whenever we're going to uh, learn for uh, VMware. VMware is actually based on the Linux. The OS base OS is Linux, but different flavor of Linux. So in this video, we're going to focus on Windows operating system, but I'm just, I'm just going to give you some information about the Linux and Unix. So the Linux, um, different types of flavor, I said like different type of flavor. Maybe you can say um, CentOS. CentOS uh, has different different types of version. You can say Ubuntu Linux. Ubuntu Linux, right? UBU, or oh, sorry. Ubuntu. Ubuntu Linux. Uh, let's see what. So, what others? Linux OS. So there's a lot, a lot of Linux OS. Um, oh, sorry, what OS? Linux, right? So I, I, I'm not going with the Linux history. Uh, Types. You see it? U V U N T U Ubuntu, Debian. It's a lot of Fedora, Linux Mint, <clears throat> Open Source, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, right? CentOS. So CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu is like famous, and a lot of the application use those uh, Linux box, and Ubuntu Linux has a uh, Linux based and also the graphical user interface. It has, it has a graphical user interface. But maximum is you want to work with uh, uh, like uh, command base. Anyway, I'm not going all like in details of Linux or Unix. Um, so we're going to discuss about the Windows today. First, we need to have a solid understanding. What is the Windows? Windows is a Microsoft product. Windows is clearly Microsoft product. So Windows has different, different types of operating system. Different types means I'm saying like end user level operating system and user, end user operating system. And another one is server operating system, right? So end user operating system and server operating system. Now we need to understand what is which one is end user operating system and which one is server operating system. So as a system administrator, if you complete this course, in this course, I, this syllabus, I'm just talking about specifically this syllabus, you will be able to know what is Windows. How many operating Windows uh, flavor of Windows operating system? So end user operating system means, as you guys know, Windows uh, XP. I'm starting from XP because before XP there was a lot other version, right? So like Windows ninety five, Windows ninety seven. I'm not going like that far. So Windows XP and XP has a different different types of version, and then uh, you can say uh, Windows uh, Vista, 
and then we can say Windows as uh, Windows Seven, and then Windows Eight, right? Then Windows Ten, and then Windows Eleven. So all these are Windows version. So you don't need to remember everything. So these three, actually these four, is already um, this four. Uh, I don't I don't know about the eight, but Windows Seven, Vista, and XP is already end of life. So Windows Seven already end of life is last like uh, I think two years almost. It's end of life. So what is the end of life? End of life means Microsoft already declared they don't gonna provide any kind of support or they don't gonna release any kind of updates. In general, like the way Microsoft released their uh, updates or patch uh, every second Tuesday of the month, that means which is called Patch Tuesday. That means they release patches for all of their operating system in every second Tuesday of the month, right? But whenever they declared end of life, that means they're not going to release anymore. And if any organization is still using Windows 7, they have to run it by their own responsibility. If something goes wrong, most probably they are not gonna get any kind of support for that from Microsoft because Microsoft already declared end of life. What is called end of life? In short, it's called EUL. EUL. Just remember the word EUL is very important. Uh, it's a technical. It's an enterprise level technical word EUL. So all those are operating system. What it is? All those are operating system. So this is this one is UL, this one is UL, right? And I believe this one is two. So now in the market, we have only Windows 10 and Windows 11. So those are Windows end user level operating system. That means what? That means if you have your personal laptop, your personal desktop, and also, if you work for a company, they will give you a laptop or desktop, or if you offer office desk lap, uh, laptop or office desk desktop. So all those computer can have now Windows 10 or Windows 11 operating. Now we need to know what kind of Windows 10 because Windows 10 has a different types of flavor which is called edition, which is called edition. So what edition is, Windows 10 has a Windows Home Edition, Windows Student Edition, which is called S Edition. And it, not only that, it has a multiple edition, but you don't need to remember all the edition name. At least if you know, three is enough. What, which three? So we're gonna look at right now. Uh, Home edition, home edition, and pro edition and enterprise edition. Okay, so these three edition, if you know, that's enough. But they have a lot more edition, but you don't need to know or don't need to remember if you need it, you can just Google it, you can get it. So what do you need to know now? Just the edition, right? So home edition, pro edition, and enterprise edition. So if you purchase any laptop from Best Buy or Amazon.com or maybe eBay or maybe Walmart or maybe Costco, whatever the place you buy a laptop, most probably your uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11 edition, same thing. The Windows 11 is also has the same kind of edition.
same kind of addition, right? Okay, so now we are not focusing this. So I'm going to delete all those because you guys already know it's end of life and nobody's using any more of those operating system as a end user operating system, right? All right, so uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11, we are just discussing as a end user level operating system, right? So home edition is a, actually a home user. Like if I have a laptop at my home, I have a home edition. If you have a laptop, you have a home edition. But if you have a laptop from your company, most probably your uh, operating system version is Pro Edition or Enterprise Edition. Pro or Enterprise Edition, right? Because why you have Pro Edition if you have a laptop from your company? The reason, now you need to learn what is the reason is, right? The reason is the Pro Edition, if company provide you a laptop, they must need to manage your laptop, what you are doing. And they need to push the patch without asking you because there is a team who can patch your laptop, like update your laptop, right? The reason is if think about one company has a 500 employees, including their HR, their administration, their sales, their marketing, their IT, everything, right? So each and every employee have um, employee has a company's laptop or desktop. Yeah, so and also I'm gonna introduce with you one one another um, word. So if you use a computer at home, if your personal computer, it may be laptop or it can be desktop, right? And you call it laptop and desktop, right? But whenever you use the same equipment, same devices, and if it is provided by your organization, your company, the company call it in a different name. They call it a workstation. What is called? Workstation. What is called? Workstation. So they call it workstation. Okay. Call it workstation. All right. So if you have a laptop from your company or desktop from your company, you have either Pro Edition or Enterprise Edition. The reason they use Pro or Enterprise because they want to manage your computer, right? If they provide 500 laptops to their 500 employees from their IT department, one of the system administrator needs to be focus on those 500 workstations. They need to manage it. They need to push the patch. They need to uh, set some policy. So it's not possible for one employee to go each and everybody's desk and apply the policy or apply the patch, right? So that's what they do from a central point. And also, if you can remember, whenever you get a laptop or desktop from your company, the company will provide you a username and password, right? So you will have your own password, but you will have also you will have your own user account. But how you get this user account? You get it from, from your company, right? So when you type your username, you are able to log into your company domain. So from an Active Directory environment, somebody is managing your laptop. And when they provide you laptop, before they provide you the laptop, they install the operating system, which is called imaging. So they image a laptop with, with uh, any kind of edition, pro or enterprise. Without pro or enterprise edition, they cannot add your laptop with, their, with the company domain. They cannot do that. They cannot, they will not be able to do that if the version is not pro or enterprise. So that's why they install enterprise or pro. So you can have either Windows 10 or Windows 11, these versions. So I think it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy to understand. And all those are end user level operating system. It can be only for laptop or desktop computer. For server, this is not the operating system for the server. Server has a different types of operating system and different types of different edition of operating system that means different flavor of operating system. So we're gonna discuss uh, within short time, those operating system, server operating system. So for now, this is what we just learned, right? This is what we just learned. Um, so Windows is a Microsoft product, that's what we know, right? 
and and is a level operating system Windows 10 and Windows 11 and edition is either pro edition or enterprise edition and how you can check which edition you are using right now so if you go simply search button you will see the search on your uh, taskbar beside the uh, Windows start button or you can say Windows um, icon or something so in the search bar if you type w i n v e r winver immediately you're going to get this winver run command right so click here and then you're going to see you see here microsoft version 22h2 uh, os build this that means it's released on the version i have right now it's released on um 2022 second um what is called quarter second quarter is the second quarter so four quarter right every three months is one quarter so one year has four quarters so microsoft released now the their patch or their new builds with the version for end user or end user operating system they release in based on the quarter okay so and i'm using here Windows 10 Enterprise Operating System. You see here, in my laptop, right, the one I'm using right now is Windows 10 Enterprise. So if, but if you, if you have to have a license, you have to have a license for this. Uh, any, any edition, like home edition or nothing is free, free only for uh, six months. After that, you have to have a license. So Microsoft license is for any product, Microsoft, any product, their license system is. Uh, as a trial, you can use six months or 180 days. And after that, you need a license. Okay, anyway. So I believe all of you guys that understand what it is, uh, end user operating system. And then, very important for a student, like for, a, I'm, I'm going to actually delete this because we already know. And I'm going to delete this. I'm going to discuss. End user already I discussed, right? So, okay, cut it. Maybe I can have here separately. Okay. Here somewhere, okay? And this one I'm gonna discuss here. Okay. So now we're gonna discuss about the server operating system. It's very important for like a system administrator. So server operating system, server operating system, Oh, how many flavors of server operating system, right? So, Windows Server 2008 or 2008 R2. Uh, I'm starting from there. Uh, I because I can I can like I'm not going that far. I can say 2000, 2000 as like Windows NT, uh, 2003, 2005, 2000. Eight, I'm not going like that. So, because maybe very few, very few company still now have 2008, 2008 R2. That's why I'm just starting from there. Okay, 2008 R2 or Windows Server 2012 R2. And then maybe Windows Server 2016, Windows Server 2019. Okay. And Windows. Server 2022. 20, so the latest version, right? All right. So, server 20, uh, 2008 or 2008 R2 is already what? End of life. UL. You guys remember UL? It's already Microsoft declared declare UL, end of life. And Windows Server 2012 R2. That's also end of life just this year on October 15th. So it's just not a one month, like 15 plus five, today is November 5, right? So that means 
um, just 20 days ago is end of life. So these two operating systems is end of life. Uh, a lot of companies still, they have 2012 R2 and they are in, maybe in, in the process of migrating from 2012 or updating from 2012 to 2016 or 19 or 2022. So these two version, I'm going to delete here because it's already end of life. So now what you, as a system administrator, what do you need to know? You need to know Windows, 20, Windows Server 2016, Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2022. And what kind of flavor it has? And say standard edition, standard edition and presenter edition. Now, only these two edition, oh, sorry, there's another edition is called, okay. Um, core edition. So don't install core edition because it's, it's kind of uh, Linux space, but we're gonna discuss about standard and, we're gonna discuss about standard and. Okay, each and every, every operating system has the same. So actually I'm going to delete the core because we are not, Gonna be use this. Okay. So we're gonna just discuss about only this. Okay. I know this video will be a big video, but like a large video, but anyway. For learning, you have to spend time, okay? So standard edition, data center edition, why you need standard, why you need data center? That is a, like, you need to understand, but in short, how I can explain it, which is, uh, if you are thinking about um, Microsoft window, Microsoft uh, virtualization system, which is called Hyper-V, in that case, if you was to have the Hyper-V environment, Hyper-V host, in that case, you can consider a data center edition because data center edition has a lot more flexibility. If you want to create or establish or deploy the Hyper-V VM or Hyper-V environment host in that case, otherwise standard is okay. So a standard and data center is almost same edition, just some difference on a Hyper-V. So if you're not Hyper-V concerned, in that case, any edition you can install in simple word, okay? Nothing else. And both both edition, you need a license. That's it. So we learn the operating system. I believe you guys understand. And here's the like semi-annual channel, what the version, when it's released. And also we already discussed about the Microsoft Windows Server version, uh, like all those version, 2000, 2003, 2008, 2012, 12, 12, 2. And you see here, x86 and x64, what is this? Difference between 32-bit and 64-bit operating system. You say operating system, uh, different uh, like difference between 32-bit, 32-bit operating system and 64-bit. What is this? What is this? So this is like Microsoft has also two types of. Say for example, you selected. For example, you selected. Okay, I want to install uh, Windows Server 2019 data center edition. Now you have to select another thing, which, uh, how many bits operating system you want? How many bits, like 32 bits, the resolution or 64 bits? You, you are thinking, okay, I'm gonna install Windows 11 Enterprise Edition. Now also you have to consider which Enterprise Edition is 32 bit Enterprise Edition or 64 bit Enterprise Edition. So you have, how are you gonna know? depends on your hardware or depends on your processor. So the, as a processor architecture, Intel processor architecture or other processor architecture, they have two types of processor architecture. It's 64-bit or 32-bit. So 32-bit architecture called is x86. x86, x86 means 32-bit processor architecture and 
x64 means it's 64 bit processor architecture so if your laptop desktop or server processor is a 32 bit in that case you should go for x86 architect uh, x86 or 32 bit operating system because your processor cannot support 64 bit if your processor is 32 bit or x86 32 bit means x86 right so if your processor architecture is x86 you should be go for 32 bit operating system and if your processor is x64 bit architecture in that case you can go for 64 bit operating system now how you know actually your processor is the x x86 or x so when you buy it they will have a specification and nowadays most of the company they when they buy a server they always buy for x64 x64 architecture processor now you can ask me so why is x32 or i'm like why is x86 architecture yes x86 is depends if you are going to install any kind of any specific application on a server and that application says okay i cannot install on a x it is a 64 architecture for compatibility if you think your application needs x86 architecture in that case you have to buy an x86 architectural processor that's why you have this difference so in a single word i can say x86 means 32 bit x64 means 64 bit so 32 bit and 64 bit operating system when you choose it depends on your physical laptop desktop or server processor architecture and how you know it when you buy it you're gonna know it right they're gonna give you a specification what kind of processor is this right so based on that you can choose your operating system that's it you see here system type so most of the case most of the company nowadays um maximum is coming up with 64 uh, maximum processor is 64 uh, bit architecture x64 okay you see here x64 based processor you can look at it okay how i can show you uh let's see uh my computer or you can say this computer before it was my eyes this computer okay if i go here display no not this one okay let's go control panel small device manager where is it is okay this is device manager right display adapter So I'll show you in an oh, okay, oh, I got it. System. System. Oh. Display, share, clipboard, remote, about. Okay. Okay, here. Actually, here. I got it. So in the settings, it shows where 64-bit operating system with x64-bit based processor. You see here? It shows here, right? So this is how you can check it on the system. All right. So it shows you here. Now, okay, Microsoft Active Directory architecture, I'll show you guys later on this one in a separate video. And in here, we need to now understand actually, okay, so you have, now you know you have a desktop, you have a laptop and you have operating system. So this is a physical, laptop is a physical device, right? And desktop is also physical. And on a physical hardware, somebody or maybe you, maybe somebody install the operating system. Without operating system, you cannot see anything, you cannot run anything, right? That's that's we understand. So that means if I have a laptop or desktop, that means I have an operating system too, right? So it can be 
Windows operating system, it can be Linux, Unix, or it can be Mac, if it is a Mac laptop. And who provide this lab physical uh, device, like a um, hardware device? So it, it can be your, it can be Dell, it can be HP, it can be Lenovo, it can be Acer, if it is a laptop or desktop, right? But for the server, we also talk about the server, right? The server, who gonna sell the server? So server sell by who? Server sell by who? Server sell by Dell EMC. Dell PowerEdge, it's called Dell PowerEdge server. Um, and also HPE and also Cisco UCS. Also there's the IBM server, but it's not that much used right, right now. Um, so most of the company right now use Dell, HP, or Cisco. Dell, HP, or Cisco, right? So we can now server. Physical hardware, right? Physical hardware. So for desktop and laptop, desktop or laptop, right? Who sell desktop or laptop? HP, right? Dell, right? Asus, right? Lenovo, um, a lot, lot of companies, right? So I just mentioned a few of them. And who sell the server? Our main important thing is hardware side, hardware, server, right? So uh, desktop and laptop is a workstation or is a end user level device, which is used by all the employees or all you as a personal, but server, who use server? Only the professional people, they use server. Whoever is a technical guy, he use the server, right? So as a system admin or, uh, or, or any other as a system engineer, we have to deal with the server. So now we need to understand what is the server is? And so server is a, is a physical hardware. Physical server, okay? So physical server is a physical, right? You can touch it. So physical server, who sell the physical server? First of all, who sell it? So who sell it? Physical server sell, who sell it? Dell, EMC. So Dell, actually, only Dell. Only Dell is selling all kind of desktop, laptop, printer, like all end user level devices. And Dell EMC is selling all server level devices. Server level means uh, the server machine, storage machine, all those things. There's a different, different type of storage, different, different type of server. So we're gonna discuss all those here. Physical server, Dell EMC, who sell it? The seller or vendor or manufacturer is Dell EMC, uh, HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HPE, and also who sell it? Cisco, Cisco, right? So now Dell, Dell has a Dell PowerEdge. If I look at here, okay. Dell, um, sorry, Dell EMC servers, right? Dell EMC servers. See here, when you type Dell EMC, immediately you want to see Dell PowerEdge. What is this? Dell, Dell PowerEdge server, right? So if I talk about the Dell, then Dell, Dell EMC, is the vendor, right, or manufacturer. Dell EMC is the vendor or manufacturer, right? So what they sell it? Dell PowerEdge, right? Actually say Rack Server. Rack Server. Dell PowerEdge Rack Server, and now Dell, uh, so two types of server, Rack or Blade, Rack or Blade. So if you say Dell EMC, Blade Server, 
in blade servers. What are you gonna see? Dell uh, blade servers to you rack based, but we don't understand actually what is EU, right? So we're gonna understand very shortly what is the U is for, right? So uh, Lenovo has thick system rack server. Um, I never use a Lenovo server because it's not that much famous. Um, most of the company use Dell, HP, or Cisco. <sighs> Does Dell have a blade server? Yes. Okay. Dell modular servers help minimize. Okay, a modular server consists of blade enclosure. What is this and blade terms? Okay. I'm just trying to show you guys actually what is which one is the rack or blade server. Okay. Let's 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 show you as an image here. Dell EMC blade server, okay. Dell MC PowerEdge M640 Blade Server. M series and Dell PowerEdge R series. R series is all our rack. R, you see here R, and you see here in the beginning M, it's a Blade Server. When you see Dell PowerEdge R740, R720, R720 or something, whatever, all those are all those are what? Is rack rack server. Those are rack server. And I'm just trying to find out a blade server. You see here Dell blade server is 9,900 something. It can be more price actually. Dell PowerEdge are Dell Blade Server. You can say new Dell Blade Server. New Dell Blade Server, okay? So new Dell Blade Server is, or it actually it's not showing the all Blade's new servers. You see here, it's a multiple server in one case, multiple server each. You see, it looks like a hard drive, right? Actually, it's not. It's one computer, one server. So it's called a case, case like uh, it's a um, chassis. In one chassis, you can have multiple types of server. That's called. A, that's why it's called a blade. It looks like a, some blade inside of a box. That's why it's called a blade. So ARM based server. And they'll power each. Um, okay, anyway, uh, Blade Server. I don't have the name here exactly. And uh, I don't know the uh, Vertex. Dell EMC. Vertex, B R T E X. Sorry, B R T X. Dell PowerEdge B R T X. Dell PowerEdge is here. Dell PowerEdge B R T X. Vertex. That's also a blade server. Okay, uh, I want so you show you the picture. Okay, okay, it shows. You see here, the, this is the chassis, and it has a hard drive here, all hard drives is here. Here's the blade, four blade, four server here in one chassis. So it uh, saves some money. Why people use, um, why people use actually blade is just saving your space. It's just saving your space. So blade server has advantage and disadvantage both. 
why if for some reason your chassis is goes bad or like it's a blade wise it's just uh costing wise price wise is cheap and also it savings your uh, rack space and with some cable power because one power you are able to run four server right that's why people some people sometimes people use blade server but performance wise yes it is it, a good performance so there is only two types of server uh rack server and Dell PowerEdge rack server Dell PowerEdge oh okay Dell PowerEdge blade server blade server Okay. So same thing, Dell, two types of server, Dell PowerEdge Rack Server, Dell PowerEdge Blade Server, right? Now, HP, HP has their own, right? HP, so HP is HP, now HP Server. HPE servers. Okay. So what kind of server? HP Proliant. Okay, Proliant. Okay, sorry. Okay. HP Proliant DL360 Gen 10. Okay, I'm just giving an example. What is the model? I don't care. You don't need to care because whenever the whenever you're gonna use it, I'm just giving an example. Okay. So HP Pro uh, Proland DL. So their all rack server is come up with DL, and then three six zero uh five six zero five four zero. It's a model number. It doesn't matter. And also Gen ten. Gen ten is that latest one gen 10 is the latest one and rec server also i think uh 940 i believe 940 and okay then we can check it out which what is the latest one I'm showing okay, 940. Dell power is off. It's going to Dell 12,000. It's a, actually it's not 12,000. It, it can be more. Like if you add more, it's, it's, it's a basic setup here. You can if you, you can add more here from here. Also, you can change the processor. You can change, um, you can customize it. When you buy it, you can customize it. And based on that, the price will be changed. So now it's by default is selected a basic price, basic equipment. That's why it's 12,000. It can be 40,000 per server. Depends on what kind of uh, uh, like, um, what kind of processor, what kind of memory you are adding. Uh, based on that price will be changed. So maybe you can choose, see here, eight GB memory only. If you go for 32, or you can go for maybe more than that, right? Uh, 64, okay? You can go for more, okay? But now you see, price is going to change. How many you want? Say for example, 32, 32, you want quantity uh, six. Six, right? 
See here, the price is going to be changed. So it depends how you're gonna buy the server, which server you're buying, but Dell PowerEdge are 940 rack server. PowerEdge rack server. So just for your understanding, what version like rack server 940 is the latest one. If it is 920, 860, 880, 890 or something, eight below eight, below seven is all our old server. All our old server. And HP Plan Gen 10 is the latest one. And Gen 9, they have a Gen 9 too. They have a Gen 9. Gen 9. And also they have a Gen uh, 8. But Gen 8 is already, already end of life. What? End of life. E-O-L. So that means you cannot get any support for far more update or anything. You cannot get it from the vendor that is from HP. So if you have any device or if your company has any device, you should advise them to replace it. It's called a hardware refresh. That means uh, decommission all the eight, buy a new one and move your stuff to the new one. That's called a hardware refresh. And decommission this one and then surplus. Surplus means when you, after decommission, if you take it out the servers from the rack and put it somewhere for disposal, that's called a surplus. Okay. And Cisco UCS. Cisco UCS. So Cisco server called Cisco UCS. It's a vendor is Cisco. Cisco UCS server. And they have a different, different types of server. Cisco UCS server. So if you, they have a rack server, they have a Blade server. So each and every company has a rack and blade, rack and blade. It depends on what, what do you need? How you convince your company or if your company already have it, depends on that, you can have your server, physical server. So you can search here, search here. So Cisco UCS, you see here, UCS C220M4, it's actually old server. It's actually old server. Cisco C series, multiple rack. Okay, actually, okay, anyway. So those are the Cisco server, right? So Cisco server, Cisco has a rack server, Cisco has a Blade server. So we at least understand Dell, HP, and Cisco has Rack and Blade server. Now, one thing we need to know, what is the U? U means Rack server can have one U, Rack server can have two U, Rack server can have three U, Rack server can have four U. Same thing, Blade server, four U, two U. Blade server is bigger because it has a blade inside. The box is big. So U means what is the size? What is the physical size of the? If it is to you, maybe it's gonna be like this. If it is uh, to you like this, if it is three you like this, if it is for you like this, right? That's why. So for example, this is the for you now, right? Okay. So this is the for you now. You said for you now. And if if you make it a little bit slow. Small, then it's you can think it's a three U, but if you, if you can two U, that means it's more smaller, right? Is here, right? So what is the one U, two U, and this is size of the server? It can be rack or it can be blade. It doesn't matter, right? So whenever it comes to U, U means the size of the server, and each whenever you put the server on the rack, rack has a unit. U means unit. So how many unit cover with your server? That's mean how many how many you? Two you, one you. So two you means it's gonna take two unit space on the rack. So let's see the rack. Rack unit because you have you have two. You see here? You see they have a hole, two you, one you like this.
this is the rack look like. So nowadays, most of the company they use 42U, total whole rack is for you see 42U rack, 42U rack. And this is the back side, you see here, this is the, oh, sorry, this is the front side of the rack, you see. And here's the rack unit. Are you guys able to see? If I click here, if I, okay. Okay, let's close it and look at on right side, 42, 41. So 42, you see there is a white line. So it's a one U with three hole, right? With three hole is cover one U. If you look at here, you see one, two and three, right? So it's, if it is two U server, that means if you put it the server on the top, that means it's going to cover 42 and 41. If it is two U server, if it is one U server, it can be rack, it can be blade. That's what it means. This is the server. This is the server. Okay. So that's what it means, U. So we learn rack unit, server size, unit U1, 1U, 2U, or 3U, or 4U server, right? And based on the manufacturer or based on the vendor, Dell, HP, and Cisco is all three. Um, three brand is famous in uh, all over the world. Most of the company use their product, their server. So they sell rack server, they sell also blade server. And also all of them sell storage, separate storage device. So we have kind of understanding about the vendor and their physical devices. So whenever we have a physical device, we have to install an operating system. We have to install what? Operating system. What kind of operating system? It depends on you as a system admin, which one you want to install. So you can install Windows Server 2016, data center edition or standard edition. How are you going to get it? You can download from Microsoft site if your company has a partnership or membership with the Microsoft, definitely your company will have the, um, uh, what is called relationship with them because they're gonna purchase package from Microsoft to use Microsoft Windows license, right? So that's why you will be able to download the ISO file. It's called what's file? ISO file, Windows Server. It's called .iso, image file, .iso. So remember ISO file, you need ISO file to install it. So how are you going to install that ISO file? There is a multiple ways you can install. Nowadays, you can install, if you have an ISO file, directly you can install it through the virtual console. Virtual console means a remote console. Like uh, HP has an ILO, Dell has an iDirect, Cisco UCS has an IPMI. So Dell remote console, remote console name is what? Dell is I ILO, oh, sorry, IDRAC, I, IDRAC, and HP has a remote console name is ILO, ILO, and Cisco remote console is IPMI, or sometimes they said ILO, IPMI. Okay, so through the remote console, you can attach the ISO file, the image file, the one you download from the Microsoft, or maybe your company already have someone already downloaded. You can just attach it and then install from there. You just need to know how to install it, right? <clears throat> That's what we're gonna have separate video, how to install the ISO file, right? So we'll see it in, in practically in another session. But today we just understand what is the server version, server edition, and then uh, what it's called, it's called server image, image file, image file means ISO file. So you can install, long time ago, people usually install through the CD. That means we purchase a Windows bootable CD. So now, and after that, like whenever Microsoft release a bigger size of uh, image, then it's not gonna cover with the CD, then uh, companies or people usually buy DVD, uh, bootable, bootable DVD, and then they install operating system 
for laptop, desktop, or server, whatever, installed through the CD-ROM or DVD-ROM, right? But nowadays, all the operating systems like 10, Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 2016, 2019, all of them are more than 4 gig, which is not going to be covered by CD or DVD anymore. CD or DVD anymore. That's why nowadays people use uh, either like virtually attach the ISO file uh, to the uh, uh, remote console, server remote console, or there is another system called KVM. We're going to learn later on what is the KVM for to access. Okay, we're going to let, we're going to learn here too what is the KVM is for. Okay, to the KVM and or you can install. You can uh, create a bootable disk. You can create a bootable flash drive and attach it with the server, then install it from there. So three ways you can install. Three ways. Three way you can install image to the server laptop or desktop. All right, so we understand a lot of stuff here already. Uh, what else I need to discuss? Okay, so we have an operating system. That means now the server or laptop or desktop or workstation is usable, right? Anybody can use it, but how are you gonna communicate? If you thinking you are working for a company, that means you should have some network. And if you have a laptop at your home, that means your laptop is connected with your home router to get your internet connections, right? So now we need to discuss about the network stuff. So the network stuff we're gonna discuss. Okay. Network. It can be Wi-Fi. Everybody we know what is the Wi-Fi is right. We have we know we have a right or uh, uh, we have a router, but what kind of router we have, we don't know. We don't have any idea what is the meaning of router, what is the function of router. If you don't know, it's completely fine, completely okay. But now we're gonna we're gonna know, we're gonna learn. And <clears throat> Ethernet. Ethernet. So Wi-Fi, you can your, your laptop has a Wi-Fi driver. What? Well, Wi-Fi device, right? Um adapter. Wi-Fi adapter. Wi-Fi adapter. And also, your laptop, if you are recently bought the laptop, maybe you don't have the Ethernet adapter, but all laptop has an Ethernet adapter. But if you have a desktop, of course you have a maybe both. Wi-Fi adapter and Ethernet adapter. And if you have an old laptop, you have both also. But nowadays, new laptop doesn't have the Ethernet adapter. So what is the Ethernet adapter? If you can look at, it's a built-in adapter on your laptop or desktop PC, right? So if you search it, you're going to see, OK, how it look like. So this is the adapter. But if you say laptop, Laptop Ethernet adapter. Okay, if I can show you the laptop. Oh, okay. So they're actually external. They're, they are showing me external adapter. I'm not looking external, internal. Laptop internal. If you don't have internal, you can buy it external like this. To connect your laptop, laptop or desktop physically with the cable. Still, they are showing me um, external one. If you don't have the internal, you see, this is the internal card. You see here, this is the card. If you have a desktop, you can attach this one. And you'll have a port. That's that's called adapter, and that's a port, right? So you can attach a cable. So if it's Ethernet cable, check the Ethernet cable. Ethernet cable. So this is the Ethernet cable, right? Internet. We, we know it as it, internet cable. Actually, it's not etern, internet, it's Ethernet cable. So Ethernet cable can provide you internet and intranet. Ethernet cable can provide you
What is can Ethernet cable can provide you what? Two things. Can provide you internet or in planet. See, here's the difference. P R P R A and P E R. Internet means you have internet connections. You have a communication with outside of the outside of your computer, right? You have a access. Say you can use Facebook, any other Google, or any communicate with other people, right? Outside of your computer. And intranet means internally, if you are working for a company, that means you have uh, you, you don't have outside communication, you have internal communication. But both of them can be served by Ethernet cable. So it can be Ethernet cable or it can be fiber cable. It doesn't matter. So we're going to learn it on our network. Uh, on, we have a network class, like chapter. On that class, we're going to learn it. Okay. So at this, we're going to see Ethernet and Internet. And we have Wi Fi. So, anyhow, we have to connect it. We have to be connected, right? And also, so it's a network devices, hardware, GAD, router, switch, bridge, repeater. We're going to learn in depth on our networking class. And also, I said the cable, right? The Ethernet cable. This is the Ethernet cable. And and this cable also called CAT 5, 6, 7, 8, different, different version, right? right? And the latest one is CAT 8. And also there's a fiber cable, optical fiber. And that fiber cable has a huge speed than the Ethernet cable, huge speed. So for a speed, you need to have this. Um, so it's adapter is different, everything is different. Network topology, I'm not going this. One thing I just want to discuss with you guys. We're going to have a virtualization class. So on the virtualization class, we're going to discuss about the virtualization. So traditional system, use server like this. And this is the, okay. I will discuss actually on the virtualization class. Here, uh, we have hardware server HP, HP version, you see here, Cisco UCS series, Blade series, storage, storage, IBM storage, HP storage, Cisco storage, NetApp storage, Dell EMC storage, different, different types of storage. Now, very important thing is understanding the core, CPU core. So in this chapter, we're gonna learn the last one is CPU core. So I'm going to discuss about the CPU core. What is the CPU core? When you buy a laptop, you say, oh, my laptop is Core i5. My laptop is Core i3. My laptop, my friend laptop is Core i7. I'm going to buy Core i9. But do you know what is the meaning of Core i9, Core i7, Core i5, Core i3? You don't know, right? So it's speed of your computer. It's your processor speed. So do you think if you are a regular user just browsing a computer, like browsing some sites like Facebook, bank account, or maybe e checking emails, you don't need that much speed. So who sell? So for example, Dell, you bought a Dell laptop, but inside that Dell physical laptop or desktop or a server, Inside there is a processor, but the processor manufacturer is not Dell. Processor manufacturer is from different, like different vendor. So the world famous processor manufacturer is Intel. So Intel has a different, different types of uh, processor. Uh, and also AMD, AMD, another company, AMD, AMD processor. So Intel and AMD, two types of processor is a famous processor, but most of the people use uh, Intel and also for the uh, Intel, uh, Intel what is called Intel Core i5, Intel Core i3, Intel Core i7, right? That's what this means, right? But now we're gonna understand. Look, what does it mean the the core i5? What is the core? What is the processor? What is the socket? So that's what we're gonna understand. So still now. Till now, all the laptop and desktop has only one processor socket. 
if you think this is a processor socket, so we're going to consider this one as a socket. What is we're going to consider this one? Let's let, let, let have a, let's have a name of name for it. So we're going to call it. Uh, just give me one second. Wow, we're going to okay. Let's take something from here. Okay, Open here I paste it here, and I'm going to delete all of them. Okay. Just write something here and make it small. Okay, what, what, what happened? Okay. Let's do one thing here. Insert text box. You can see. Um, socket. You can say socket. You can socket. Um, socket. So each laptop and desktop has only one socket. Laptop and desktop has only one socket, but it can have multiple core. So what is the core? Less. Check it out. What is the core? Okay, so we can have like a different color, then it's, you can understand better. Okay, say for example, you have Core i3. That means you have what? Core. Core. Okay, let's do one thing, not do it like this. Core. So you have a core, two core, right? One socket with two core is a core i core i3 and core i5. Maybe some core i5 has two core, some core i5 has four core. So basically, core i3 is two core with, with one socket. So if say your processor is P, Intel Core i3. It says, what it says, like sometimes whenever you buy a laptop, it says what? It says, um, Intel or i3, uh, say 2.4 gigahertz, like this, for example, just an example. That is what? That means, your laptop has a one socket with each two core and each core, each core has what? 2.4 gigahertz speed. Each core has 2.4 gigahertz speed, right? Okay, so that means your socket, your laptop has how much speed? Let's calculate. <clears throat> how much speed you have? So 2.4 times two, right? So you have 4.8 gigahertz speed, right? In your laptop. So if you have a Core i5, that means maybe you have Four. Four core maybe, right? So I7, what does it mean? So it is, I'll just, whenever it goes for I7, it can have the same core, nothing different. Just maybe speed is different. Maybe instead of 2.4 is 2.8 or seven, something. Or maybe there is some other feature Based on the speed, they said Gen, uh, Gen A, Gen Seven, Gen Ten, Gen Twelve, like different different version. It's just just for their selling. It's it's just to sell new laptop. So if you have a Core i five, it's more than enough. More than enough. If you have a four core for a personal laptop, it's more than enough. 
So maybe you have like this, Core i7, 2.7 or 2.4 or maybe 2.4. So 2.4 means what do you have if you calculate it? Then times another two. So you will now get the, so you have, your laptop has 9.6 gigahertz speed. So your laptop has a nine, total 9.7 gigahertz speed, right? What is the speed? Total speed is 9.7, right? Oh, oh, sorry, what, what, what the calculation? 9.6, 9.6 gigahertz, right? 9.6 gigahertz speed, right? And maybe your laptop has a memory, which we call it RAM, right? Memory. So in your laptop, maybe you have highest 16 GB of memory. That's why uh, you spend thousand dollar, right? Maybe, or maybe less than thousand dollar, 16 GB of memory. So that is your laptop or desktop is a like good speed. It's, it's good speed, good, good computer. And if you have a hyper threading, which why we are hyper, Hyper threading. If hyper threading is enabled, that means your processor will be logical. Logical processor will be how many? So if you have a four core, how many core this one? Yes, also this one called four P CPU. That means how many CPU has? It's called four CPU. P CPU. So whenever you have PC means physical CPU. One, two, three, four. So four core times one socket equals to four. The way is calculate how, how you can calculate the CPU is calculate four times four times your uh, socket equals to your equals to your what? your PCPU, right? So if you can calculate, okay, you how many you have? You have four, right? Times one socket equals to what? Is four PCPU. That's how we got four, right? So now think about this, calc oh, okay. And if nowadays, laptop, desktop, servers, everything has a, one like uh, the motherboard has one extra feature is called hyper threading and it's by default is enabled whenever you have a hyper threading and it's enabled and whatever the physical cpu you have logically is going to be double logically is going to be double what double so it's going to be uh total eight pcpu you can say actually pcp is lcpu actually logical cpu or you can say cpu it doesn't matter. So it's a logical processor is eight CPU. So whatever the physical is, you may have double on double if you have a hyper threading enabled. And most of the case by default is enabled. And now it is most of the laptop, desktop, and server has this feature on the motherboard on the BIOS. Okay. So that's what we learned to how to calculate how to calculate the speed of your laptop. But now if we can if we Convert it to the server, server case. So nowadays, server has two socket. Oh my goodness. So go for the socket here. Two socket, right? Okay. Okay, another socket. Two socket. So two socket means if you have a server with two socket, each socket has four core. How are you going to calculate? So how many socket do you have? How many core? How many core per socket? Four core, right? And how many switch, uh, how many socket do you have? Two, right? Two. That means what? You have eight, right? You have eight vCPU. And nowadays, um, it has more CPU. More, it's, it has a lot of core. Just give me a second. Let's have a nice reorganize. Say I have it.
is I'm talking about the server, right? So if you have a server like this with now how many code here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 core each socket. Think about it. Think about it. So now how are you going to calculate it? You have a you you have a server, server X server or left server, whatever, but it has a two socket. Server can have two, server can have four, or server can have more socket. Usually, maximum one U server or two server has two socket. Okay, so if you have a two socket server and each socket has 12 core, it can have 20 core, it can have 40 core. So if you go like 20 core or 40 core, that means your price is gonna be high. Your price is gonna be high. Okay, just think about one socket has 12 core. How are you gonna calculate total core? So your core is 12. And how many socket do you have? Two, right? Two socket. So 12 times two equals to what? 24 pCPU, right? And how how about the uh if the hyper threading is enabled, then logical process, how many logical processor is gonna be? 48, right? 48, right? 48 logical processor. So what is the logical processor for? So for some reason, if you are running an application and your application needs more, you, physically you have only 24 CPU, right? But if your application need more than 24 in that time, it's gonna boost up the processor. It's gonna boost up if you have a hyper threading enabled. So it's gonna, for a certain time, it's gonna use your logical processor. Okay. But anyway, whenever you configure it, we don't gonna count. Uh, we can we're gonna configure anything based on our logical. We're gonna all the time based on our twenty four CPU, like based on our PCPU. So this is the example for this. But if you think, okay, you have how many? You have. All right, you have four socket server. You have what? Four socket server. So if you have a four socket server, then count it. Each socket has a 12 core, and then how many socket? Four, that means what? 48 PCPU. Now how many logical? 96, right? Logical CPU. So this is how we this is how we count the code. So that's it. That's it for the basic understanding of system administration, how we can select a server, how we can calculate the server core, socket, CPU, and what you need, an operating system. So when you have operating system, that means uh, you'll be able to install the operating, uh, like when we have a server or laptop or desktop, so you, can, you will be able to install the operating system. And also now you will be able to decide which operating system you're supposed to install. Depends on the situation, depends on your requirement and what is the ISO file you understand. And also when you choose a server, you now realize or understand actually what does it mean? What does the mean the core, right? And also shortly, I wanna show you one thing. Each and everybody has this, if you use Windows 10 or 11, search button here, right? So on the search, if you type SYR STM system, immediately you're gonna see system information here, not system configuration, system information. So if you click system information, you're gonna get this uh, window and it will tell you about your laptop or desktop or your server if you run like this. How many processors you have? So I have only one socket, you see? Only one processor shows here, that means one socket. But I'm using AMD Razer, it's an AMD processor. And how many me uh, megahertz it shows as a mega? 
2301, that means it's 2.3 gigahertz, 2.2 gigahertz processor, and six core, 12 logical processor. You see here, six core. That means I have one socket with six core, one socket with six core, and it makes 12 logical processor. And that's what you can check your, um, your servers and everything like the same way. And also install physical memory, that's memory, that means RAM. How many is 16 gig. So that's all for today. Um, thank you, thanks for watching. If you think this video is uh, available for you, uh, please share with your friends and co-worker. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel and also watch my uh, series of videos. And if you want to complete, I want to release the, uh, I want to complete the whole syllabus, okay? Uh, different, different video. So uh, watch my first video and also this video, I'm going to release it. And next one is coming up with uh, for um, virtualization and um, active directory. Thank you. Thanks for watching.